Hi everybody, welcome to a coronavirus quarantine special of the Fire Me channel. So uh, like many of you, our office has shut down and sent everyone home for the foreseeable future. Now we're still working from home, but uh, it's a little difficult not being able to collaborate with our regular team. But that being said, gives me a chance to catch up on some of these great videos and uh, probably do a few more of them now too actually now that I'm uh, home a little more often. So uh, with the current uh, situation, the whole world going into a complete um, chaos it seems like, especially in the financial markets, everyone's dumping their shares. Uh, this has given us a great opportunity. So I'm gonna go through a few of the companies that should be on your watch list um, just in case you get a chance to actually buy them. Uh, the market has dropped a ton, so I'm not gonna say go and wholesale, put a full position on, but maybe it's time to start nibbling, maybe a quarter position in some of these companies. And uh, we'll kind of go through a few of those. But um, first, let's uh, talk about what's happened in the last week or so. So everyone's panicked, everyone's cashing in, everyone's running uh, to the door, uh, just trying to get out at the same time. This is causing a lot of downward pressure on the stock prices, but this is uh, the opportunity of a lifetime if you're a long-term investor. And when I say long-term, I think, uh, you know, we're not talking 30 years here. We're talk. I'm gonna say two to three years, you're gonna probably double your money from where the um, prices have dropped to. So this is a great opportunity, especially if you're a younger investor or got uh, low, net worth like our million dollar portfolio does right now um, great chance to average down if you got in a little too high and uh, i just uh, want to say like i've lived through uh, the dot-com bubble uh, the crash that happened during 9 11 financial crisis of 2008 and you know i must say the first uh, two three major crises where the market crashed like this it kind of spooked me uh, this time I'm greeted with open arms and I'm actually quite excited about it because now it gives us a real chance to um, do some, I'm going to say bottom feeding of some of these prices. So the best companies in America for a fraction of what they cost just a month or so ago. So let's start uh, going through the list here. All right. Uh, so the first uh, company I want to talk about um, is Enbridge. So Enbridge Pipelines, they are North America, one of North America's largest uh, oil pipeline systems. They also have some natural gas, but they're mostly well known for their crude oil transportation from uh, Alberta and Western Canada down throughout the US and uh, all kinds of refineries all over the lower 48. Um, unless uh, something happens where we don't need gasoline uh, or oil supply here they're going to be good for quite a while they're a dividend aristocrat so they've been paying a great dividend increasing every year for a long long time uh this slowdown you know it it's going to hurt the producers uh more than the uh, pipelines uh, they will see a pullback of course but they've got a very safe yield even if it does uh, pull back a bit, you know, in a year or two, once this whole mess is blown over, they're gonna be right back to where they were. So keep Enbridge on your list. Uh, it's kind of a widow's and orphan stock. Uh, not very exciting. The share price doesn't spike dramatically, but it pays a really good dividend. I think it's over 7% now it's pulled back so far, but um, one to keep on the watch list for sure. Uh, following that theme in the oil and gas sector, got Exxon Mobil and Chevron so these two companies are the best of breed in the uh, integrated oil vertical integrated oil companies uh, Chevron I would say has the best balance sheet that's the one I like but uh, Exxon I don't ever recall seeing prices this low for probably 20 years now for Exxon so um, either one of these companies is a great addition both pay really good dividends now um, with Saudi and Russia playing this uh, race to the bottom for oil prices, flooding the market, that's only going to last for so long. Uh, nobody wants to lose that kind of money, um, especially when you have a massive uh, national budget to support like Saudi does, and uh, Russia is not much different than that either. So 
I think that's going to the price action on that's going to resolve itself um, for the oil and gas. The best thing that could happen is some of these shale producers um, consolidating and uh, maybe some going under. But there's way too much production in the U.S. specifically right now, so that needs to trim back. So maybe this is a good thing overall, but uh, just a really inopportune time with this coronavirus. Uh, affecting the economy like it is. Okay, uh, the next sector I'm going to talk about is tech. So here we go. Uh, uh, the three that I really like, Apple, Microsoft, and Google. Now, if you were waiting for a pullback, you're probably fairly scared because of the um, how quickly this has dropped. So uh, you just got to remember though, like the stock market is an escalator up and an elevator down. So when it comes down, it comes down much quicker than when it goes up. Um, to me, this is the buying opportunity of a lifetime. If you're wanting to get into Apple or Microsoft, it's pulled back a lot. Uh, I think there is still more to come down, but uh, it might be worth putting a quarter position on either one of those. Uh, Google's another one. I kind of target Google anything at or below $1,000 for Google is a screaming deal so um, if google starts pushing around a thousand i'm going to get some more shares of that and that's something you guys should be looking into as well um, i wish google paid a dividend but uh, who knows maybe with the new management they'll start looking at that a little more serious but uh, all through both three of those i really like so um, if you've been at the sidelines and you are interested in one of them uh, maybe pick up a few shares this week and uh, if the price keeps going lower maybe put another quarter position on later okay another favorite Disney so um, now all their parks are closing uh, I think China their parks closed a while ago but in the US they're gonna be announcing closures or they just have and uh, traditionally this would have been a major hit for the company and it is but the great thing with uh, Disney right now is they currently have uh, Disney Plus and all these other streaming services they just brought online which have proved wildly popular so they're still going to be making a lot of money through their subscriptions um, and also this coronavirus isn't going to last forever so once it's once the virus is basically um, off the radar things are going to be business as usual parks will reopen it's not going to be a long-term uh long-term setback for the company so definitely worth looking at uh, getting into disney maybe pick up a few shares the price isn't down nearly as dramatically as some of these other companies but uh you know it, it oh, under a hundred dollars um it's so it's down a significant amount from where it was so it might be worth picking up a few shares okay so social media so you have twitter facebook and snap are the three main ones um basically snap isn't profitable twitter i don't know if they're uh, cash flow positive or not facebook for sure is and has a tremendous balance sheet so um, facebook has pulled way back to uh, levels i think uh, rivaling um, when they had the uh the scandal with uh their da users data getting released the first time so you know I think Facebook probably will pull back in a little bit more but that, that's one to check out and keep on your watch list as well um, I, I wish they paid a dividend but uh, you know they're a huge cash machine they generate a lot of revenue and uh, if everyone's stuck at home for the next two weeks month or who knows how long um, people are going to be on social media a ton and Facebook's going to keep making money whether or not this virus is going around or not. All right. Okay, so the next ones are fintech, so like Square, Visa, MasterCard, and uh, I'm going to say JP Morgan, it's not really fintech. So these are all like financial services. So Square, uh, if you missed out on the Square rally to 80 bucks, now it's your chance to get in at around 40. Um, I was watching this at 40 and I was thinking, oh, it's a little expensive, it'll pull back, but this thing has been a rocket. So, you know, um, like I said, short term it might be painful, but uh, next two, three years, this thing will be back to where it was, I'm sure of that. Um, it's a great time to nibble in, get a bit of a position put on to that if that's one you've been watching. 
Visa, MasterCard, this is the buying opportunity of your lifetime. I don't think that you'll see um, another pullback this hard in those companies. Uh, it's just the only reason they're as low as they have been is just because of the mass sell-off. But definitely Visa and MasterCard, if you have ever wanted to own these, this is the time now to get into them. Only take a small position now that might pull back some more, but this is a really good entry point in my opinion. Uh, JP Morgan, best of breed bank, has the best balance sheet in the American banking system. Uh, if you are interested in this company whatsoever, now is the time to start getting in. This is definitely um, not something to be scared of. It's not the financial crisis of 2008. Um, back when that happened, everyone was scared that every bank was going to go under until the uh, U.S. government stepped in and guaranteed or did the bailouts, I guess. But um, those four, Square Visa, Mastercard, and JPM, are, or JP Morgan, are definitely on my watch list right now, and they probably should be on yours if they're not already. Okay, retailers. Now, this is an interesting uh, one. So I've got two to stay away from, or actually no, sorry, one to stay away from and one to, to look at. So uh, Amazon, I want you guys to keep your eye out on that guy. Now Amazon um, has dropped a significant amount since this whole thing started, but in reality is it probably should be going up because with people not going out, everyone's ordering stuff online and getting it shipped to their house with their free delivery and all the rest of it. Um, pack it like I think today since I've been home uh, all day, I'll, all I've seen is delivery trucks roll up and down my street nonstop all day. So I know people are still ordering stuff online, probably more so than they were before, even just because they don't want to go out. And um, Amazon, in my opinion, if you believed in it before, you should really believe in it now. So that's one to definitely keep on your radar. Um, for me, it's still frothy, but I think if it pulls back a bit more, I'm going to get real interested pretty quick in it. Uh, Walmart, another retailer. I'm staying away from that one right now. Now, if you go to Walmart anywhere in the U.S. or Canada, the shelves are getting cleared out, but not of their high margin stuff. It's mostly in the grocery um, lower margin aisles, uh, so like toilet paper, cleaning supplies, etc., um, bulk food to some degree. But uh, the problem is short term. Um, I th think this is going to boost their profits, but long term, this is just pulled forward demand, meaning in the next two, three months, the toilet paper they would have sold then is being sold now, so the demand's not going to be there. So overall, um, Walmart probably should be pulling back, like all these other companies, but it stayed fairly elevated. And you know, it wasn't that long ago when we seen uh, Walmart down at eighty, ninety dollars a share. So. Um, I, in my opinion, it's probably going to collapse as well eventually. It's just a matter of when. But uh, I'm not buying Walmart, but I am kind of keeping track of the price. Uh, keeping with the retail th theme, uh, two to keep uh, on your kind of radar is Goose. So they make the Canada Goose jackets. They're um, so expensive, they call them an investment. I think they're about $1,000 for a jacket, but they're incredibly warm. Uh, the other company is Levi. I really like both of these companies in terms of the retail space. They're really great brands. Uh, I think they're both going to be around for a long time and uh, they've both pulled back um, exponentially here, especially um, since uh, this last um, little round of uh, scare. So uh, definitely if you've ever been interested in owning either one of those, you uh, might want to uh, consider picking up a few shares of them. Definitely keep your eye on uh, Levi. They pay a nice little dividend as well. And, uh, you know, it's, there's a few little retailers like that. Those two are kind of my favorites, but there might be a few others you guys watch that uh, might be worth picking up. All right. Now, one of my favorite companies, Berkshire Hathaway. So Berkshire has pulled back. It was, I think, uh, 210, 215, and now it's down to 170 something. Uh, if you've ever wanted to get a share of uh, Berkshire, the company that Warren Buffett runs, um, 
great chance to buy into this. Uh, the one thing that Berkshire has is insurance and no matter what you do or how bad the economy is you basically can't go without insurance or well if you well that's I think the saying is if you can't afford insurance you can't afford not to have it so Berkshire is definitely a, uh, a big time uh, holding that I personally have and I really like uh, the way they run their business it's fairly conservative they sitting on a they're sitting on a pile of cash right now so I think if you were to uh, want to get in uh, right now would be a great time to start uh, picking away at that all right uh, for REITs uh, I'm going to mention one Ventus so we hold that for our million dollar portfolio um, I still really like Ventus. It is a REIT that holds uh, rental properties for scientific uh, uh, research type buildings as well as the one that I personally really like is the seniors homes. And what I like with Ventus is they don't actually run these seniors homes or nursing homes and they don't run these labs. They simply own the real estate and there's an operator uh, that uh, basically um, runs the business. So they just own the real estate. Now, even with this pullback, people still have to live somewhere. Um, these are long-term leases. These aren't places that are going to be able to just say, I'm not paying the rent or we're walking away. They've got tons of patients or elderly people in their care and in some of their properties and long-term government contracts and others. So um, I definitely am not hesitant on the uh, side of things in terms of revenues and what uh, Ventus is going to be able to generate. So that one's pulled back about 75% from the high. I think it's down to $27. It was over 80. That one's, uh, I've got, that one's really got my attention right now. So uh, ch check it out. Uh, there's other REITs as well uh, with interest rates at historic lows, like I think 0% basically now. Um, that's the best position uh, for these uh, REITs to be in because the more interest rates go up, the lower the share price is because they have higher interest exposure. So really great time if you're running a REIT to be able to uh, refinance your debt and everything. So check one of those out. Uh, okay, last but not least, aerospace. So this is probably one of my um, favorite sectors. So first off, um, Boeing. Let's talk about Boeing. So Boeing had major um, issues with their 737 MAX, so obviously that was a problem. However, uh, let's be real, the aerospace industry in the US is a major critical industry. It's critical for the country. Um, there's only two, air, um, basically two um, major manufacturers in the world that uh, produce aircraft, Boeing and uh, the European counterpart, uh, the name just escapes me for a second here, but oh, Airbus. Um, so, you know, outside of that, you know, there's some smaller players. I think Bombardier has a small jet production, but basically Boeing and Airbus are the two big boys of the industry. And it's a strategic, a strategic industry for the U.S. as well. So no matter what happens, Boeing's not going to go under. The U.S. government will bail them out if it comes to it. Um, now with the airlines and shutting, not really shutting down, but significantly being reduced in terms of travel and capacity, this will have an impact on Boeing's production and who's taking what jets and the ability for customers to pay. Um, I'm going to say hold off on picking any shares up of this yet. Now it has pulled back a huge amount from over $400 to just over $100, but uh, I do think there's more downside risk to this one. Uh, Boeing's credit just got uh, derated to just above junk bond status as well. So that's that's like danger zone there. So um, it's on my watch list, but I think there's more downside to it before we see a rebound. But long term, if you're horizon five, ten years plus out, uh, you know, you might want to pick up a few shares now and start nibbling away at that one. Uh, now for the actual commercial carriers, uh, the one that I really like is Delta. Now they've um, got the, they have the best balance sheet in the uh, passenger airline industry. But uh, what I really like with Delta specifically is um, they came, flat out came out and said we're reducing capacity by 40%, uh, 
which uh, most airline executives haven't come out and said how bad things are really going to be, but 40% is a huge amount. Now, why I think Delta is a, an incredible uh, deal right now is because I think they're going to weather the storm with their balance sheet, uh, number one. Number two, once things get back to normal, um, travel is going to be back like it always was. So I don't think there's going to be a whole lot of um, potential downside risk, but uh, you know, there always is potential for more downside. So you might want to just take a quarter position now, but definitely keep that one on your um, radar. All right. So last but not least, the speculation stocks. So uh, the ones I had uh, kind of earmarked here were uh, space. Uh, um, so basically Virgin Galactic, uh, Uber and uh, Beyond Meat. So I kind of follow all those companies. Uh, we bought a little bit of SpaceX, uh, or sorry, Virgin Galactic for a million dollar portfolio just to get our feet wet. But um, if you were into these stocks before, now's a great time to average down, especially if you're a believer in the uh, trend. So like they say, the trend is your friends. So if you think Uber and uh, like this Beyond Meat type stuff is the wave of the future, um, definitely a great time to pick up a few shares of that up. Now the big risk for these, um, a big risk for these kind of speculative stocks is number one, they don't have uh, cash flow or earnings for positive net earnings to start with. Uh, number two, their balance sheets are usually not that great. Um, and three, their survival depends on their ability to raise capital, which might have just become a significant amount harder. Uh, investors are scared now and uh, people just don't know what to do right now. So the speculative stocks, you know, um, longer term, if you believe in the trend, uh, they'll probably be okay, but short term, they're probably a significantly higher risk than uh, what I'm willing to take right now. But, uh, you know, anybody who's interested in that, like they said the same thing about Tesla too, and look where that, what happened with that. So, you know, it's all, there's always a chance that one of these will pay off for you. All right, guys. So that was my uh, first quarantine, vid quarantine coronavirus uh, video for the Fire Me channel. Uh, I'm going to keep um, doing a few more of these videos here. Uh, I'm going to do a bit more research and keep my ear to the ground on what might be a great buy for our million dollar portfolio and uh, keep uh, reviewing companies that you guys might be interested in. But uh, anyways, let me know what you guys think of the list and uh, what are you guys watching now that we're all down on quarantine or are you guys out uh, of the market in cash? If I could have seen the future, I would have loved to have been in all cash and then bought back in now, but uh, hindsight's 2020. But uh, anyways, uh, give the video a like, thumbs up, make sure you leave a comment, and we'll see you guys on the next video.